welcome, welcome. Good to see each of you. Today, if you could turn in your Bible uh, to James chapter 3. Uh, James chapter 3. And I heard someone um, uh, wonder if, if Brian got it uh, right uh, that I've been preaching through December and uh, Lord really longer. Um, and yeah, it's not, it won't be a monthly, uh, won't be a monthly thing. Uh, we'll be finishing the year, and unless God changes direction, um, you can call me pastor for longer than that. I'm so excited to be here. We'll be speaking on uh, the tongue, and I, I love, I love the, um, I love the pictures always, uh, the tongue, because the first picture that we saw, it was just a, a powerful beast of a lion, but he had his mouth shut, uh, and here we see. Uh, this powerful beast, and he's probably roaring. Uh, and that's our message today, is going to be on the tongue, and are we, are, do we have it closed, or are we roaring? Um, Proverbs 18 says that uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Can you imagine that? Death and life in the power of the tongue. We hear words like, I love you, or I hate you. Yeah. We hear words like, we got the test results back. Or, come into my office as a promotion. Um, there's the, the tongue, and some of these things instill instantly in us uh, an effect. And, and when they say death and life are in the power of the tongue, in Proverbs, you're in the right spot. And James, and if you could just um, pause there for a minute while I introduce, um, Death is in the power of the tongue. Joshua um, and Caleb went in with ten other spies at God's direction from Moses. He said, go check out what I promised you. Uh, and it, I'll just read quickly. You can keep in James. Uh, the, the men go out um, and they bring back a report. And actually, in the Bible, it's called an evil report. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and they brought back word unto them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. They, they were in Sunday school, I remember, the, the flannel boards. I don't know if those exist anymore. But the flannel boards and uh, two men carrying a cluster of grapes uh, between them. And they said... Uh, it is as you told us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. Uh, this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Those are the giants. And they, ten men came back out of the twelve and said, we cannot do it. And, jo and Caleb sees what's going on, and he tries to still the people. He says, let's go up immediately. Let's go. God gave us the command. We saw that the, it's just as God said, flowing with milk and honey, let's go. And the two things that I took away from this account uh, for Israel is that 12 people can see and hear the same thing. And we're prone to see the negative and we're prone to fear. Uh, and so that today, if that's you, trust God. Uh, and let's, let's let our, use our tongues to the glory of God. Um, two men did. And death is in the power of the tongue. I saw different um, commentaries. I want to know how many Israelites died at the result of that, that report that instilled fear uh, into Israel. How many folks died? And there's ranging uh, um, estimates that they've done. Over a million Israelites left um, Egypt. And some say up to 3 million. Um, but 75% of those people, everyone from 20 years and older, died as a result of the fear that that report uh, instilled in, in 14 verse 1. After they hear the report, uh, actually in the last part of 33, it says, uh, And we were as in our own sight as grasshoppers, so we were in their sight, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. The power of death is in the tongue. 
If those ten men had come back and said, yes, uh, God's going to need to do a miracle, but God can do miracles. God does miracles. It would have been different. Uh, life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life. Uh, I was in a children's ministry, and uh, there was a commander, Commander Cheatham was his name. He came in in his dress uniform, uh, and he gave uh, a talk for the kids uh, about the tongue. Life is in the power of the tongue. He said that one morning he had gone in um, to head out to school, uh, and he said it was a little different. His mom didn't seem well. Um, she couldn't get out of bed, and he said, Mom, are you okay? And she said, yeah, I'll be okay. Just head off to school. Um, and it had snowed that morning, and she had one of those um, bugs, the VW, uh, the round, uh, real ones. Not, well, the new ones are real, too, but, you know, retro, <laughs> it would be now. And um, on his way out to school, he wrote on the windshield of that, that VW bug, I love you, Mom. And as we talk today, uh, there will be one or two other times, but I, I don't want you and your thinking of what I'm trying to present to limit it just to the tongue. Uh, there could be uh, writing. Am I still? No, you're not. So, there, there could be things that are, are written. No, yours is I can use this one. Good. There could be things that are written uh, that we allow into our life. Uh, it's somebody else's tongue, if you will. It's an extension of the tongue. Um, and Commander Cheatham, uh, as it had snowed on that VW uh, bug, and he was leaving school, and he knew his mother was not, uh, not the best of spirits, he wrote on the windshield, I love you, Mom. And then off to school he went. Years later, he was looking through some of his, his mom's things with his mom there, and uh, he came across the picture of the VW with, uh, I love you, Mom, written in, on the windshield. Yeah. And he said, Mom, why would you save that picture all these years? And she said, I was going to I was going to kill myself on that morning. And I looked down. That's all I need to see. I love you, Mom. Death and life in the power of the tongue. We need to control uh, intentionally the power of the tongue. Would you pray with me for the message? Thank you, God, for each person who's come. Thank you, most of all, for your word. Without it, there'd be nothing to share, nothing to encourage, nothing to uh, guide. So I pray, Lord, to, today that we would be mindful. I pray that the message is timely. Uh, and if it's not uh, urgently timely, Lord, I pray that we would tuck it away for when it will be timely. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you're in your Bibles, you can catch up with me. I feel like I should be sporty this morning. I've got this, uh, no fumbling with tops, just a quick, I'm like a quarterback, right, or a receiver, just a, no spills. Um, if you'd read with me uh, in James chapter 1, and I need to get there myself, James chapter 3, rather, and verse 1. It says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. And here, uh, there's a verse possibly seeming out of place, um, and it may not, I hope, as I give a quick background of James. Uh, James 1, uh, the writer, Jesus' uh, younger brother, half-brother, uh, is encouraging uh, the Jewish community mostly, he says it's written to the 12 tribes of Israel, but he can encourage us through it as well. Uh, in James 1, he encourages us to live out our faith and our Christianity in the midst of trials. Uh, in James 2, I believe he, he encourages us to live out our faith and our Christianity 
in the way we treat people. And here in verse chapter 3, I believe he's encouraging us to live out our faith and to live out our Christianity in the way we speak, in the way our tongue is used. And in 3 1, when we say here, we see here, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. That, that word masters means uh, there's a position of authority uh, and a position of influence. And he's warning folks uh, don't feel that you need to weigh in uh, as an authority. Uh, maybe things that you don't need to weigh in on. He's saying, don't, don't feel like you always have to speak your mind. If you think of the uh, servant, if somebody's serving food, imagine a, 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 the, the presidential, uh, they're having a big, a big chindig at the White House. And, and one of the people that are serving there uh, at, at, the, at the table, uh, and they hear the conversation, wouldn't it be odd if, if one of the servers uh, chimed in his thoughts uh, on uh, whatever? It would be odd. Uh, be not many masters. And so he's warning, it's not, the verse is not out of place. Uh, when we think of be, being careful with our tongue, he's saying you don't need to weigh in on everything. Uh, don't. He's encouraging us, be not many masters. In, in Psalm 39, and if you're up for the, the sword drill, as we used to call them when I was a kid, uh, you can turn. I, I hope that if I turn quicker and you're continually behind, that you won't be discouraged. Do turn, uh, if you would. Psalm 39, if you know it's going to take you five minutes to get there, you could give up and maybe practice at home. Um, but uh, Psalm 39, verse 1, says... I said, I will take heed to my ways. I will sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me while I was musing. The fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days what it is that I may know how frail I am. The writer purposely says, I'm going to take care of how I step. The direction of my life, I'm going to pay attention to it. I'm going to take heed to, he says, I'm going to take heed to my ways. And his first resolution is, I'm going to put a bridle on my tongue. I'm going to be careful of the things that leave my mouth. And, and interestingly, and, and for you, I bet it will be just as it is for me, uh, there's that one that you can't help it. They just know your buttons. They've got them memorized and they play them like a piano. Uh, and, and I'm with you. I've been there. And, and David, the psalmist, says this. That one, uh, I want to be careful. Uh, he, he uses a word. I think it's his enemy. I'll take heed my ways. I'll sin not with my tongue. I'll keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. And I don't know if the one that pushes your button is wicked or not, but there's somebody in David's life where he says, I'm going to just keep silent. I'm not going to say a word. And while he's keeping silent, it says, my sorrow was stirred. And if you look up that word, it means frustration. The frustration starts to, you know, ignite. Uh, and then it says, while he was musing and while he's pondering and thinking, now there's a fire, and he just can't hold it in. Uh, and so he speaks, and, and, and God bless David for his, his example here. He didn't speak to the individual. He spoke to God. And in humility, he said, God, would you remind me uh, how short my life is and how frail I am. Uh, on this occasion, as many, David gets it right. And so uh, don't, you don't need to weigh in. Even when that frustration starts to burn, uh, there was a, uh, a man I had thought about doing the quote. I didn't write it down, but he said this. He said, the best time for you to hold your tongue is when, if you, if you don't hold it, you'll burst. That's the best time to keep holding it. You just think you're going to burst. James 3, verses 2, 3 and 4 are... Uh, examples and encouragements that we see as we do hold our tongue. Um, 
he likens the tongue. In verse 2, let me read for you. Uh, for many things we offend all. If a man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, that means mature, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the mouth, in horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven with a fierce winds, yet they are turned about with so with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor lists this. These mighty ships under the control of the governor. And what a what a mighty working God could do if he was the governor of our tongue. If it didn't get out unless God steered it that way. What a marvelous thing. Wouldn't it be marvelous to be used of God to preach the gospel, to share the gospel, to encourage someone that needs it. I love Chick-fil-A. Um, Really, pretty much my favorite place. Uh, I don't know if I could take my wife there for a big anniversary, but I'd be tempted. Uh, I like Chick-fil-A a lot. <laughs> but in Chick-fil-A, they said, how do you know if a man, uh, if a person needs to be encouraged? Uh, and it said, if he's breathing, he needs to be encouraged. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if, if we could be going along, and maybe not even, uh, not even, beating somebody with the Bible and said, you need to be saved. But just, um, God loves you. Or uh, you'd have to be careful about, as a guy, you wouldn't want to tell, tell a woman, boy, that's a nice shirt. But use your head uh, and try to be encouraging. Use your tongue for the glory of God, to sing his praises, to, to, to proclaim his word, uh, be used of God. First Thessalonians says this, uh, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. Even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but as pleasing God. He put his gospel in our trust, uh, and it's going to be, be depending on, is your tongue uh, under the control of God, or is it out of control? <coughs> the remaining verses have to do with a tongue that's out of control. Uh, there's one verse, uh, be not many masters. There's a couple verses of the tongue in control, and I think by God's design, most of the verses have to do with the tongue that's out of control. And I pray that that's not you uh, or not me, but the, the tongue is uh, easily out of control. So I want to read through and just uh, note a couple thoughts I, uh, I owe you for last week. Uh, it was lengthy, and um, I owe you a couple minutes, so we'll see if I, I don't, this is my art, to see if I can shave some off uh, and uh, pay you back. Uh, so I'll try to be, be uh, to the point. Uh, I'm going to read and just share some thoughts from the different verses. Verse 5 of James 3 says this, Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. The, the tongue is a fire, a whirl of iniquity. It is, a, uh, it is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. Set on fire of hell. And as I pictured this and I uh, looked into this and, it, and it's almost as if something from hell, fires of hell, were, were taken from hell and used of our tongue. And that tongue that God gave you uh, to sing a new song uh, for God when you're saved. And there we are. Something from hell is influencing our tongue and being used. In Isaiah uh, chapter 5, there are six woes there. And one of the woes uh, is to the people that uh, have let the, the knowledge of God slip and they don't they don't much care about what God has uh, in mind. And he, and he says this of hell, in verse 14, it says, Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. And as I was thinking about uh, here, we see it's set on the, on fire of hell, I wonder if our tongue, that can be said of, of 
our tongue, that hell hath enlarged herself and opened wide her mouth. And I don't want us to think retro of has my tongue been used uh, of the devil? Uh, has my tongue been worldly so that someone didn't quite get what God had for them? But I want to look forward in thinking of our tongue. God forbid that when someone needs to hear from God, when someone needs to hear from us, maybe just encouragement, that our tongue uh, is used of the devil and used in a way that would not please God. Uh, fire of hell. Reading on in verse 7. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea, it is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. <coughs> and at this point, I would like to commit connect the thinking of not just our tongue, but the tongue of the media, the tongue of that radio show that you like to listen to uh, on the way into work, the tongue of the newsman uh, that you may see every night. Uh, there was an Anglican priest named Nicky Gumbel, and he said of the tongue, the words of the tongue should have three gatekeepers. Is it true? Is it kind? And is it necessary? Three gatekeepers for the, the tongue. And I don't think it would be wrong to say our ears should have three gatekeepers. Is it true? Is it kind? And is it necessary? I'm under-informed. I, um, I don't watch much news, really, I don't watch any news. Um, and I don't want you to think less of me or that I've um, got my head stuck in the sand. Uh, I can't remember in my life ever watching a news program. Um, I just can't make myself... Maybe it's of God, maybe it's just I'm being me. Um, but when I, the times that I do, we were working in a customer's house uh, at the very beginning of COVID, and that TV was on all day, and all day, different things, and it was just, even not even paying attention to it, it was oppressive. And maybe it's because God knows how frail I am. Uh, I, I probably would have been one of the 10 that said we can't do it. And so, uh, for me, uh, is it necessary? I don't think anyone's going to ask my opinion on these weightier matters. And so for me, as the, as the, for the 20th time, that thing wants to come in, and my spirit is swayed so easily that uh, I, I, don't, I think I'd be distracted from the things that God wants me to be focused on. I think God I might be distracted uh, and maybe a little bit too down to have my head up and say, uh, friend, are you doing okay today? I just read this Bible verse this morning and it blessed my heart. I, I, let me share it with you and maybe it will bless your heart. But I've got news in my head that's circulating over and over and it's brought my spirit and my eyes down that I won't see. Put some gatekeepers and set up some principles. And I'm not tell, asking you to put your head in the sand, but I'm saying be careful. We put some gatekeepers on there in, in, in Philippians, and there's a couple of verses, so if you're up for a, a race, <laughs> Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. In Philippians 4, keep your finger if you would in James 3. In Philippians 4, verse 6, it says, Be careful for nothing. And as a boy, I like that verse. And like, mom's always telling me, Be careful. Mom, the Bible said, uh, be careful for nothing. Um, and really what that means is don't be filled with care. Don't be filled with care. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, <coughs> shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And here in verse 8, 
where this God of peace uh, is going to be with you, uh, here in verse 8, he mentions some gatekeepers for the ear, and I think it could be for the tongue. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And if I could, I'd like to say, speak on these things and listen to these things. Death and power, death and, and, and life are in the power of the tongue. Let's be careful of how we listen and how we use our tongue. In verse 10, Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing my brethren. These things ought not to be so. I don't know where you guys are at with the blessing and cursing. I, I, I'll be honest with you, on occasion, uh, a bad word comes into my mind. Um, I don't know, if maybe it's from when I was a boy, I'm not sure how it got there. And it's a bad one. It's not OG or Dirty Rotten. Uh, it's a bad word. Uh, it gets into my head. But before it can get out, it needs to get past the gatekeepers, doesn't it? I was on a job site uh, Tuesday, and I don't know why this man felt convicted, but he said one of the bad ones. We were speaking, and he, he, said, uh, he said a big one. Um, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about that. He said, I, don't, I didn't need to say that word. Um, I'm sorry. Blessing and cursing coming out of our same mouth. And he says, it ought not to be so. Verse 11 and 12 <clears throat> really gets to the heart of it. Verse 11 says, Doth a fountain send forth the same at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh water. And that is the heart of it, isn't it? Uh, literally the heart of it. What's in, uh, I think it's in, in Luke. Luke 6 says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Have you ever been so excited about something that you can't keep it in? Um, out of the abundance of the heart, wouldn't it be cool uh, to use a, an older word, I don't know, modern word for it. Wouldn't it be so neat if our heart was so filled with things of God that it just kind of spilled out as we went through our day? Uh, God's did this for me, and I, God's done that, and I, I can't wait to see Jesus. Uh, wouldn't that be neat? But in the same sense, as our mouth and our tongue uses cursing, uh, that, that's from what's within. And you might say, well, I, I can't help it. That is what's in. And it, it gets out. Um, there's, it, you're not lost. You're in good company, but you're not lost. In Matthew, it says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And so, uh, not getting deep and not preaching a, a second message. I told you guys I owe you some minutes and I'm going to strive towards that. But in Matthew, he's saying you can influence your heart by how you invest. Your heart can be changed. And so, uh, I don't know where you're at and, and uh, what's coming in, but, but guard it, limit it, and then invest in things of God. Invest uh, if you would, to a certain uh, amount of time in the Word of God per day. Invest. Some of you have money that comes out of your paycheck straight to some sort of investment. 3% or whatever, and they're going to match it. I work for myself. I wish someone would do that for me. Uh, invest. We can change our hearts. If you think that the, the, the man standing before you and the man standing before you is truly just a man, but the, the idea that I'm standing behind a pulpit sharing God's word with you is an evidence that hearts can change. I didn't always want to share God's word, uh, but God changed my heart. 
man, I wouldn't change it for anything. It was, it was a good trade. Uh, I, I'm happy uh, to make the trade. And so as, you, uh, as, these, as our tongue is, is used in a way that wouldn't please God, ask God to forgive you. Let it be a reminder that we need to uh, the garden. Uh, it may be encouraged. If, if 10 minutes a day in the Bible and uh, five minutes in prayer is, is what you're doing, and um, you're still spewing uh, evil, um, invest more time and be careful more about what gets in. There, the, the, I mentioned before I was singing a new song. Uh, I can't remember what book it's found in. But at, when you were saved, God put a new song in your heart. And you might need to limit the music that's coming in. The music filled with the, the, the bad words. Um, be careful. And the other thing is, if you're, if you're having trouble with your tongue, don't be discouraged. God is a, a, a good God. He's a gracious God. And He likens us uh, so many times in His Word. He likens us to uh, an agricultural illustration. Have you ever planted something? And um, especially as a kid, you know, you plant it on Saturday and they're there on Sunday seeing if it's coming out yet. Um, God uh, can change your heart and God can change your tongue. But for that one that has your number and that one that causes the fire uh, to stir and you just can't feel like you, can, you can't hold it in, um, put a gatekeeper there. Uh, and keep it quiet. Uh, I don't think it was a good conclusion if we were on the way out and uh, I was the preacher, oh, he was okay, but his ending really stunk. Um, this might be a stinky ending, but that's the end. God bless you guys. I'm going to pray um, and we're going to have a song and don't forget to join us for coffee hour. Lord God, I thank you for the time. Lord, I thank you for the attention of each person here. Lord, I pray that I've heard from you and that um, each one that's come today has heard from you, Lord, to be careful of our tongue. Lord, might it be used for your glory, not for the, <clears throat> the work of the devil. Lord, I pray that with, through our tongue, Lord, the kingdom of God would be uh, increased, Lord, and that the mouth of, of hell would be shut Lord, if possible, because we've given our tongue to you and that we've committed uh, to put in a bridle on the things that we'll let out. Uh, if it's not for your glory, Lord, if it's not kind, if it's not necessary, Lord, that it won't get out of our mouth. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.